Okay guys, here we are. Three techniques that are must learn for all you co-anglers out there. You might say, John, why would you be telling us about co-anglers? You're a pro, you've been a pro for a long time. You fish out of the front of the boat. You are focused on the front of the boat and you don't care what is behind you. That's kind of correct, but that's not where I started. I started as a co-angler. I fished a bunch of co-angler tournaments in BFLs. Back then they were called Redmans. And also in the, which is now the Toyota series. Back then it was the Everstarts. Uh, and I fished as a co-angler in the Invitationals, the Bassmaster Invitationals. I have fished as a co-angler with other pros in the front of the boat. Um, I fished, I don't know, probably 40, 50 different days on the water in the back of a boat. Plus I fished a bunch of tournaments as the pro having a co-angler with me. I've seen a bunch of them be not successful and I've seen a bunch of them be very successful uh, with a little different philosophy and a few different techniques. So I'm gonna show you the three that I've seen over the years be the most consistent of putting fish in the boat. I'm talking big fish and numbers, limits, which is hard to do out of the back of the boat. Here we are. I'm gonna give you the number one, without a doubt, is the shaky head. That's right, spinning rod technique. Shaky head is a, you know, a piece of lead and a hook where the worm is threaded on there. Uh, just like that, you can kind of see it on there. This is the Missile Baits Magic Worm, an excellent, excellent shaky head worm. But as a co-angler, you want to focus on a little bit lighter weights. I've seen that that be key. One, you don't get hung up as much, and B, you can throw it in a lot heavier cover. Uh, so one, one eighth is very good. You can drop to a one sixteenth. We don't offer a one sixteenth in the Warlock head. That's what this is. That is a very, very snag resistant uh, shaky head. Uh, one eighth should be, I mean, standard issue for non boaters. You can now. Now one is not mentioned in here. I want to mention it. Is a drop shot, a drop shot, and a shaky head are not interchangeable. They're two different baits, two different techniques. This one, it was. This is probably number four for me, but this is not going to be in my top three. I'm just telling you from years of experience and of, of fishing and having people fish behind you, the drop shot is good, very, very good. And you're going to use probably want to use a little bit lighter weight for the same reason, lighter weight on the shaky head. But you're just going to throw that thing and just drag it. Try to fish it as slow as possible behind that person in the front of the boat. Whatever's available, anywhere for you know, depending on the lake, two to forty feet. You never know. Uh, so you want to start have that eighth ounce probably where you want to start. But keep some keep some heavier ones if you're if your pro or the boater is fishing on some deeper structure go up to a quarter, maybe even a three eighths. You can go up to that quarter ounce and get that bait as deep as you need. I was fishing with a buddy of mine this fall. He caught a shaky head fish out of 45 feet of water. Deepest shaky head, head fish I've ever seen. Very versatile bait, puts fish in the boat all the time. That is far and away number one right there. Spinning rod, eight pound test is what you wanna have. Eight pound fluorocarbon on there. You can either have a liter or straight fluorocarbon whatever you're most comfortable with, that's gonna give you the most feel. Uh, and probably like 12 pound uh, liter material, I guess Sunline braid, uh, and then you know some type of good spinning rod. I got a cash in seven foot uh, medium, medium rod with a fast taper. It's got a little bit of backbone, but still a soft tip. That's, that's absolute money right there. And then number two is this is anytime the water temperature is above, listen up folks, 50, five degrees. That water temperature is above 55, five, five, not 75. I don't know what 75, 55 degrees. Top water is going to play. And this, a popper is a really, really good way to do it out of the back of the boat because you can throw it a long ways. You can pop it if you get it near cover and leave it while your, your boater may be getting busy, doing all kinds of different stuff. You can fish a popper slow, draw those fish out of the cover, up off those grass lines, wherever you're at, 
I'm telling you, you better have a popper handy. A walking bait does great as well, but this is the this is the Spro E Pop. Any type of good popping bait, very good. Top water definitely is a great. You can interchange this if you wanted to with like a smaller uh, whopper plopper, something like that as well. Uh, 30 pound Sunline X Plasma braid, seven foot medium heavy rod like this cashing right here, and then just a good good bait caster because you're only talking three rods here. Good bait caster, uh, Daiwa. I like a seven to one. I like a little faster with the uh, top water because sometimes they'll hit it, run at you. You need to be able to gather up that, all that line right there. But that is, I mean, co-anglers wax some big ones on top water. Wax them big ones. And number three for me, call me old school. I, I guess I could be old school. I am getting older. Uh, but this is the old ball and chain. They call that because it's the Carolina rig. You got the ball up here with the weight and your uh, bead and then your, your little swivel. Then you're going to have a line going down to your hook and your bait. This is the bait of choice for me. I don't care where I'm at. I'm, I'm talking small mouth up north, big large mouth in Texas. I have caught piles of big fish and numbers on this baby destroyer for missile baits. Three out Gamagatsu hook. I usually do 14 pound leader between the hook and the swivel. Uh, this is Sunline Shooter, but whatever 14 pound is fine. I really, really, really emphasize putting fluorocarbon on your main line. I do not like braid. I do not like mono. Fluorocarbon is very abrasion resistant and it's very, very, very sensitive. So you can feel every little rock that that, that weight is coming over or the ball, because it's ball and chain. Every one of those, you can feel it uh, with that fluorocarbon. I like either 18 or 20. You don't need to go super skimpy, super light. There's no need for it, really not, not any need for it. Seven foot or seven foot three inch rod. This is a seven three, this is my preference, medium heavy rod. You want a little slower taper. You don't want something too stiff to where you're gonna break off, because remember, you have to deal with that, that leader right there. But the, the ball and chain works so well out of the back of the boat because you can heave it a long, long ways. Anytime that that, that guy in the front or gal gets offshore uh, or gives you access to throw offshore, if you get near a point, by all means, take, the, take that Carolina rig and just heave it as far as you can out on that point and drag it across it, up it, any angle that you can get, that is where, what I would do. I would start on the back of the boat. Start with a half ounce weight. You really don't need to go any heavier than that uh, out of the back because you, you really don't control the angles and you're gonna hang up a lot less with a half ounce weight. I like the barrel shaped uh, weights like that. Uh, the tungsten, I, I prefer tungsten, but lead has caught millions of fish. Uh, with the Carolina rig, so any whichever one you want. Uh, sil I like the cylinder shaped ones. That's just my preference. Um, but man, that Carolina rig puts fish in the boat out of the back. I mean, up north, smallmouth country doesn't matter. Put this one on. You know, guy might be up there live scoping, and you're thinking, oh, I'm I'm screwed. I it, mm -mm, no way. Take that take that sea rig, bomb it out there, and then just pulling those heaps of brown sharks, man, just, just giants. I've caught a lot of giants on that, that rig right there up north in a bunch of different lakes, uh, in, in any, anywhere in between there and, and Texas, I'm telling you, Carolina rig is a, a great, great bait to fish out of the back of the boat. So those by far are my number three, one, two, three techniques must have for fishing out of the back of a boat uh, or, or being a co-angler, either one. Those three right there will put fish in the boat. If you have any other ones, drop them down there in the comments. We'd all love to hear what your go-to co-angler technique is.